Miles Morales. They might just call me Chalice if I got to catch them all. I volunteer to take the challenge. So I Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Toys, Noise, and Action Figures. I'm actually outside of the Fine Arts Theater here in Beverly Hills, Southern California. Uh, and I'm at the screening of the Transformers movie, 1986, uh, here at the Fine Arts Theater. Uh, and many other producers and the voice cast of the classic movie are actually here today. So we're just getting out of the theater right now uh, and got a chance to watch it. This is my second time seeing it in theaters. Never saw it in theaters uh, as a young and as a kid, but uh, I did see it uh, a few years ago uh, when they had it in theaters. And then, uh, and then now I get a chance to see it at an official event today. Uh, again, with uh, uh, the likes of Flint Dilly, uh, one of the writers and producers that worked on the original Sunbow cartoon and also on G.I. Joe. Uh, he's here. A lot of the voice actors are here, including Greg Berger, the voice of Grimlock, uh, also the voice of Perceptor. So anyway, we're going to get some footage, some video, uh, get you guys caught up on uh, this fun and uh, epic event uh, for Transformers fans everywhere. Stay tuned. Dearly, the memories are a blessing. Amen. How we do, Rizzo? <laughs> Some of you are all doing cons. And on the other side of the camera is the missing element of all of this, which is fandom. Yes. 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 One more thing for the stop motions. Francis and Travis worked on. Who else worked on front over here? Joe, get in here. I, I mean, we just did a thing where we were recreating like blooper reels and scenes you didn't get to see from the you know cut out of the movie. They're they're copying right now. But uh, nevertheless, these guys came in and uh, did it. Just a fantastic job. That's that was super fun. Um, uh, ben and all the guys at Hasbro, they really deserve a big shout out. They yeah, got a lot of love with the franchise. Yeah, and yeah, Ben's been a really irresponsible enabler for all this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really good, and, you know, it's, and uh, no, and just thanks to everybody for making this happen and their work. Thank you, Hasbro. Yeah. 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 Tom Griffin's having a reunion uh, next month for anybody who wants to show up. And, uh, you have Tom and Joe and Jay and also Vegas and Carol. Yeah, they're right. Go on. Yeah. Really glad to be here 35 years later. I'm just glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I just got up vertical. <laughs> and Thank Mr. Paul will be part of the Hasbro Pulse Con. Yeah. yeah. Coming up. Okay. Cool. Right. See you guys out of the all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here with Mr. Flint Dilly, the legendary Flint Dilly, uh, producer, writer, he's worked on G.I. Joe, Transformers, Sun, all kinds of stuff, and I mean, just a legend in the field. Uh, how you doing, sir? Oh, just great. Now, we just got done watching the uh, re-release of the 35th anniversary print. That's the best print I've ever seen. Yeah, and the sound, the sound was amazing, too. Because I saw it a couple years ago in theaters, and I was just like, the, the theater I was in, I like the sound, but today it was watching. Yeah, oh yeah, and we, we premiered our uh, stop motion one, so we just made for laughs right. uh, with Hasbro for that new toy release because they, they're they coming out with toys a bunch of the characters from the movie, right. movie accurate, and a bunch of the actors showed up, Greg Berger's over there, Michael Bell's over there. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, definitely got to get some pictures more. Oh, you've been, yeah. you've been interviewing yeah. me? Yeah. Actually, actually, I was in, uh, in 2019 when we were in San Diego for the con. The, yeah. The last con. Remember that show? Oh? Yeah, I was that, there. That, yeah. You, oh, yeah, yeah that was yeah, a, yeah. I, That thing, we got Joe Charvin produced. That thing came out absolutely perfect. And think about it this way that show, I mean, the fact that Vince put on a concert 
I mean, yeah. they had opening acts. It was at, and the show also was uh, at Brick by Brick, famous San Diego. Met, I mean, they have a bunch of metal shows there. Uh, but the fact that he actually was able to have the screen up there yes. with like the scenes from the movie playing at the same time. Wasn't well, that great? Yeah. yeah. No, that was. I mean, they, and they have Vince Nicola doing with it because I've forgotten how metal that sounds. Like. It's eighty. You know, it's eighties. It's like you know, pride, yeah. metal, yeah. Uh, power balance. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want yeah. the eighties back. I mean, didn't need to look into that and think, oh, I just want the eighties back. Well, I, I, ironically, there was a movie, a famous, legendary, iconic movie from the eighties, from nineteen eighty five. Uh, all the way to 1989, the trilogy, where they hop into a legendary car, the DeLorean, to go to the future. Yeah. Now we're here. We're yeah. actually the best. Right. We want to go back. We want to go back. Yeah, we want to go back. Yeah, we want to be back. Hey, you know what? Thank you very much. Another thing. Hey, great. It's great to see you. The uh, Unicron, I backed that, and I uh, was able to get one. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Because of you, we got the removable head. Uh, yeah, no, I, I had to have the removable head. Okay, that head floating across the screen. Right. My favorite single shot right. in the movie year. Probably an all the Transformers. Yes. I don't know why. And you guys saw me do the Unicron unboxing. Yeah. And for those of you that love the fact that the head was removable, thank this man right here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because we were out there hustling. Because nobody believed we were going to go to get like 5,000 people spending $600 for the biggest action figure ever made. And, and now there's people, now yeah. there's Johnny Come Lately that are spending almost $2,000 because they want to get their hands That's on right. It. That's right. You should have listened to us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. My, of course, in my closet because my wife won't let me put it up. But nevertheless, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, just, I, mean, I got it. Break it out every now and then. Yeah, absolutely. Get in trouble. Absolutely. This is right, this is great. Thank you so much. Okay, good seeing you. God again. bless you. Take care. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm standing here with the incomparable, the legendary, Greg Berger, famously known for voicing Grimlock and many other characters. Me no bozo. Right there. I'm sitting here with Greg Berger. Real life. Me kick butt. There you go. And we just got through watching uh, the screening of the 1986 classic Transformers. The, the best, movie. cleanest print and sound I've heard or seen since the original release. I was just talking to uh, phenomenal. I was just talking to Mr. Flint Billy over there, and I was saying the same thing. The sound was amazing, and it was clear. Clearly, the video clean, was great. Clean, clean, clean. Right. And, and you know what? Uh, I mean, when you stand next to the heroes that you grew up watching, that inspired you to do right and to treat other people great, and that we could all be heroes, it, it does something to your heart, guys. It just does something to your heart. You know what, G.I. Joe, we got to do those PSAs. There you go. And I still hear from people about fundamental change that they attribute to those PSAs. There you go, because knowing is half, half the battle. The battle. Pretty well, easy. I like to sign stuff and say Joeing is half the battle. Actually, jo actually, actually, could you talk to Hasbro to get them to do a GI Joe Hasbro project? There you go. We can use Maybe. another USS flag, Hasbro. I'll talk. <laughs> hey, but you know what, Mr. Berger, I appreciate everything that you guys did for our generation Boom. and continue to do. I follow this guy on Facebook. He's always posting uh, positive, motivating messages. Thank you for saying that. And, and that actually get people to really think about the way we treat each other. I try to keep it interesting, but I also try to keep a social conscience attached to it. There you go. There you go. And we appreciate you for doing that, sir. And as far as this, we follow the science, we get out of here. Yes. We don't follow the science, this is where we live. Could you listen to Greg Burke? I'm trying to get back to Comic-Con next year. Come on! That's what we all want. Let's go! Hey, I, I keep telling conventions, not yet, yes. but soon. Yes. Hey, brother. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Berger, thank you so much. Boom. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here with the legendary Vince Nicola. You don't understand. Like, some of you guys don't understand the significance. But if you know, you know. Vince Nicola is the man that we just got through watching the other sc the, new, the screening of the 1986 Transformers movie. And he's a legendary producer and composer. And he did the entire soundtrack, the, the, the score for the movie. That, that is just... I mean, just... Tell us about how you literally were inspired to do that whole score. 
Well, you know, it was written to storyboards, and I didn't have any picture to, to write for That was a challenge for me, because I'd never done that before. Wow. Um, but the, the producers, when they approached me, they gave me the whole story. They said, just, you know, do your thing. They, they hired me because they liked my score to Rocky IV. And they, yeah, thought, yeah, they yeah. felt that, that that style would be applicable to their movie. Maybe you guys didn't hear the part where he said he did the score to Rocky IV. Maybe you didn't hear that. Because right now there should be a whole bunch of clapping emojis going down right now in heart. Behind them, too. <laughs> Man, I, oh yeah, I just saw this nice Yeah, yeah, man. So, real quick, uh, yeah. for my producer friends out there, because Toys, Toys, and Action Figures, we do a lot of hip-hop production, things like that, that goes along with the comic books and all that. You, from what I understand, got in a room with all kinds of keyboards and synthesizers. Absolutely. I mean, can you tell us a few of them? Because some of my friends out there that are producers know about the ASR-10, know about the MPC-2000. But what, what kind of equipment did you have in there? Well, first of all, Casey Young was the gentleman that did most of the synth programming, and he brought literally a truck full of synthesizers. There was uh, Moog Modular, EMU Modular, uh, Oberheim Modular, there was uh, two TX, uh, TX 816s, Yamaha, wow. which, which are basically uh, eight DX7s in one box. Are you keeping count of how many he just said? And there was some cord. I can't remember what cord. We, we used the Minimar. We used an OBX by Oberheim. I mean, it, it was, and I'm just scratching the surface because wow. I can't remember all of them. Yeah. But, but I had, it was like a kid in a candy store. I just loved it. Man, and you know, and, and uh, what I, one thing I got to thank you for, I'm glad I'm here with you right now because I was able to buy a copy of the vinyl at that oh, show at Brick by Brick. Yeah. You signed it for me. Um, it was almost like Michael Jackson, some, Prince, anybody could have, <laughs> but it was just like, it was on that level to me because again, the movie, you guys know how much the movie means to me and the guy that did the score that just is etched in your memory, I was able to get a vinyl from him and he signed it for me. Oh, Thank you once again, Mr. Pleasure, Vince. And you look great because I know you, you uh, had, had a little COVID yeah, going on. Yeah, man. They, every, you know, God bless. The, the people in the hospital took care of me. There you go. I'm well, writing music again and I'm good. And he looks like he could have been up there and helped Optimus Prime fight Megatron just now. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nicola. My pleasure. You have a good day. You too. Take I care. Love this. Yeah, so I'll try to coordinate. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. All right, sir. Introduce yourself so they know what kind of legend you are. I'm uh, I'm Paul Lighting, voice of Perceptor. There you go. Uh, in the Transformers. Uh, and what, what other? I know you've done plenty. I mean, you got credentials. Tell us some of the other ones, man. That we... uh, ones that a lot of folks know are video games. We've done a lot of video games called uh, Metal Gear Solid. There you go. Uh, Colonel Campbell in Metal Gear Solid. Uh, Fallout Three, Fallout Four, Fallout Three, and like 17 different voices. I'm the Vault Tech Rep. Yeah. Oh, uh, God of War. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there's so many of them. I, I have a hard time. I'm also Grandpa Max in Ben 10. There you go. For 10 years. Yeah. And a whole bunch of stuff. I, I often have to, and sincerely, I have to go on to IMDb to I, you you see remember what done. I've done. Yeah. Let, let, let's put it this way. Uh, this is Toys, Toys, and Action Figures. Many of you guys are video game fans and, and comic books, all that or whatever. If you guys are into video games, you heard it here first. He's done so many of those voices. And Ben 10 is one of my favorite animated shows, too. Uh, he's a voice of Perceptor. And last time I was down in San Diego in 2019 at Vincent Cola show, uh, uh, you gave me such good advice on getting into voice acting and things like that. Yeah. And it's something that growing up, a lot of kids don't realize when they watch these cartoons, you're actually being inspired to get into the business in different ways and treat people with respect. And uh, it, it's just a great experience that we grew up with these cartoons. Cartoons. And that sound in there, I'm hearing you guys so clear on that movie because they did such a great job of remastering it in the sound. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, see, the wonderful thing about watching something like this that happened a long time ago, I listened to Perceptor. Um, even with Ben 10, I listen to these shows now and I don't hear my voice. I know it's me, right. it came from me, right. but that voice belongs to that character. There you go. I also did a character in uh, Incredibles, in right. Incredibles 2, mm -hmm. uh, a character called Reflux. Yep. Uh, he talks like that. And I see that character, and it doesn't relate to me as being me. Right. It's the magic of 
animation put put together with voice. Would, would you would you say if I had to ask you, would you say it's because you're actually performing? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't think of it as voice. No, you can come in now. I think of it as acting. I'm 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 an actor uh, who happens also to do. And, that, and that's exactly what you told me when we talked in 2019. Yep. You were just like, take acting classes, actually, because it's really acting. It's not just voicing a character. It's not trying to be a funny voice or do right. something like that. It is becoming that character right. and letting that voice come out of the, of the character. Hey, I want to thank you personally for your time right now. Oh, and then also for inspiring an entire generation and to continue to do so. My pleasure. We're all in this together, folks. There you go. Always. All right, now. Okay, so you see it. You see what kind of day I had actually getting a chance to go out to the Fine Arts Theater in Beverly Hills and uh, and, and see Transformers, the movie, screened with the actual producers and the writers and, and the voice cast. Uh, shout out once again to uh, Flint Dilly, uh, to uh, Mr. Michael Bell. I didn't get a chance to actually film the conversation I had with him, but that's the voice of Bumblebee. He was there. Uh, Paul Eating, voice of Perce uh, Perceptor. Greg Berger, Grimlock. Uh, it, I mean... And then, and then again, to sit there and have a great conversation with Vince Ticola. Uh Awesome day, very blessed day for us uh, fans of the franchise, the Transformers. Uh, again, being in that theater with all those guys watching it, you couldn't have told 10-year-old Reggie back in 1986 that uh, that would come to fruition. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out with us in Toys, Noise, and Action Figures today, coming along for the ride uh, for the special event. Um, as always, as I'm signing off, be good to yourself, be good to others, show empathy, open your toys, play with them. Peace. Until all are one. <laughs>